Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this Sunday night, AEW will present the third edition of All Out, and it will mark our second time staging All Out at the Now Arena, just outside of Chicago and Hoffman Estates. This will be an epic night of wrestling. We have the return of CM Punk, who will face off in the ring for the first time in seven years against Darby Allen. There are four championship titles on the line. Chris Jericho will have his career on the line when he takes, takes on MJF. And there's also a 21 woman casino battle royale and much more. So now for the next 45 minutes or so, let's call let's turn this call over to AEW CEO, GM, and head of creative, Tony Khan, for some opening thoughts. And then we're going to open the lines for your questions. Tony? Hey, Jim. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks everyone for joining today. I'm very excited about All Out. Uh, this is going to be the biggest pay per view event we've ever done. And it's it's very special, and I really appreciate you all joining us today. It's been a great year so far for AEW, and it's great to be back on the road again. It's great to be at the Now Arena for Dynamite last night, uh, Rampage tomorrow, and All Out on Sunday. I'd just like to remind everyone we have All Out available for purchase on in-demand cable operators and on satellite, including DirecTV, Dish Network, Sling, and streaming on Bleacher Report. Uh, we have All Out Live in more than 140 movie theaters across North America. And our international fans and all of you great media folks can uh, watch the event internationally on Fight TV. Uh, and I'm excited to get all your questions. I want to make sure we get as many as possible. So let's jump in and bring it on. All right, Tony, appreciate it. So what we're going to do is, uh, as normal, is I'm going to let you know the first question is going to be from Stephanie Chase of Digital Spy. And then Stephanie is going to be followed by Sean Radican of PW Torch. And then I'll, uh, as we go on, I will, I will let you know who's next in line. So Stephanie, you're up first. Great. Great. Hi, Tony. Thanks for taking the time to talk today. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, the card for All Out, it is just absolutely stacked. And um, without giving anything away, how have you found putting it together and not just picking the main event, but with so many big matches, making sure the talent are happy with where they're positioned and storyline wise. And you've done some huge matches on TV and special shows, but how did you decide what was saved for Sunday night and what could be done at something like an Arthur Ashe? It's a great question. Uh, we have so many great stars. We have a great roster and it affords me the ability to be able to book a lot of big matches and we have huge matches on dynamite. There's going to be a great card at Arthur Ashe for grand slam, uh, AW dynamite grand slam, but really at all out, I think this is the biggest card we've ever presented period. And it's our biggest pay-per-view card. And I, and these are some epic matches. Um, a lot of it was, was planned very far ahead, and, and there were some changes to the card, of course, but uh, it, it's been a long time in the making, this card. Uh, and when I'm putting a pay-per-view card together, uh, a lot of considerations go into it. In many ways, this was the most challenging, but then when it came time to put the order down, I didn't find it that way. It was pretty natural. Like, uh, in one pass, I, I said it, and pretty much everybody I've, I've told it to and said, like, what do you think of this? Everyone's like, man, that sounds really, really good. And, you know, there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. Uh, but like in this case, I think uh, it's the, uh, it's, it's going to be great. Uh, it, it, there's, it's a long process. I mean, it's a 24 hour job and, and this past week, it really has been, um, you know, uh, really life has been a 24 hour job for me the, the, the past several days, you know, with a lot going on as the Jaguars have had cut downs and particularly as the English transfer window is closed. It's interesting timing is going to a pay-per-view. So really I have been working like tw literally 24 hour days recently uh, and uh, having to change the card up again in the last uh, 24 hours and make some changes. I think it's all going to work out. We'll have a lot of exciting stuff coming up on Rampage and Dynamite. And this pay-per-view card, when you, I mean, some of the things that are happening, uh, CM Punk versus Darby Allen, that was not just a week or two of planning. I mean, that's really a year and a half in the making of talking uh, between myself and Punk. And during that year and a half, Darby's been working his ass off and becoming a legitimate wrestling star. Uh, it's amazing to think back when I was on the Jericho cruise with Darby and thinking about putting in uh, the story with him and Sammy. Uh, you know, going into Revolution 2020 
in January, we were talking and I wanted to do something like Savage Steamboat with Darby and Sammy. And you might remember that Darby got the skateboard to the throat and couldn't talk. And I wanted to build to an epic comeback. And he came back when Moxley was getting beat down by the inner circle and Jeff Cobb in Atlanta. And he got one of the biggest pops uh, in Atlanta. just one of the biggest pops, period. Uh, and it was an amazing comeback. And ever since then, Darby's been so hot through the pandemic. He, he rose and became a, a bigger name in wrestling. And that was all happening at the same time when CM Punk was contemplating a comeback to the wrestling business and, uh, you know, talking it over with me and, and the timing had to be right. And now is the time, the now arena <laughs> and, uh, and so much going into this card. And, and again, a seven year layoff for Christian cage, who to me is one of the all time great wrestlers and stepping in the ring with somebody who's already in the hall of fame, somebody who is one of the most accomplished wrestlers of all time. Uh, and the best champion in wrestling, Kenny Omega. I think it's such a stacked card and I, I cannot wait for the young bucks, Lucha brothers cage match. Uh, Britt Baker and Chris Statlander is a tremendous, tremendous world title match. Uh, and we're going to, on Rampage, see more of what's to come. So I, it, it's a, I, I'm glad you asked, and I, I'm glad I got a chance to just lead off talking about the card a little bit, Stephanie, because in some ways it's been the most work to put a card together, but I think it will be the most rewarding for the fans and for all of us. And in some ways it's been the easiest. Thank you. Thanks, Stephanie. Okay, we're going to go next with Sean Radican of PW Torch. Following Sean, we've got Garrett Martin of Taste Magazine. Sean. Great. Hey, Sean, is, is, did, is Wade here? Is, is, are you the only torch person here? Uh, I don't know. if Can you hear me? I hear you. Okay. Uh, I don't know if Wade's here. I think Richie Fan's on with us. <laughs> good. Well, I love the torch. It's great to hear from you guys. What, what can I do for you, Sean? Uh, it's good to talk to you, Tony. Uh, this is kind of a long question, but... Um, you know, you've leveraged so many great things on TV in the last eight to 10 weeks with big matches. Um, and so many things have come together for you, like Dante Martin having a standout performance against the Young Bucks, bringing huge free agents like CM Punk. And sounds like, you know, perhaps more will come, you know, maybe all out this weekend or beyond. Uh, Britt Baker's on fire as a character, Anna Jay returning on TV, uh, you know, running venues like the United Center and Arthur Ashe coming up in New York. It, the question is, with so many things going so well and the way the roster's going and the addition of the big free agents, how do you capitalize and sustain, you know, on that and sustain the momentum going forward? Do you, you know, do you see, you know, as you're planning things ahead, do you see anyone breaking out similar to maybe Austin, the rock in the nineties and really taking this far for you? I don't want to compare different people. I think it, it, it can be apples and oranges trying to compare the you know current wrestlers to wrestlers of the past and, and the business of the business of the past because it's a very different business. And in many ways, it's a better business. And the business, you know, some people will disingenuously point and say that the business was hotter in the past. But the fact is right now, a wrestling company that's in prime position, and there's really two of us in the catbird seat, can make more money than any wrestling company ever made in the past and i think it really goes to show it's very impressive what eric bischoff did at wcw to raise the revenues to where they were grossing hundreds of millions of dollars before cable rights fees were accounting for hundreds of millions of dollars uh so i do think uh you know without comparing people from this era to people of the past era there's a great way to keep our momentum going sean and that is to keep delivering great pay-per-views, great dynamites, and great rampages, and keep those numbers high. And absolutely, live attendance is a great barometer. Live attendance, very important metric. Merchandising sales, very important. I've put a huge amount of money, eight figures of my own money, into developing video games rather than uh, paying outside developers and then giving them a piece of it so they own a percentage. I'd rather get that money. And so we put our own money into development and then we're going to recoup that money on the back end and it's going to work out great. And that is a business project that ha it was a very viable business project and uh, I've done a lot of viable projects like that. And I think dynamite has been a very viable project. You know, I made a big investment into it 
And I wasn't uh, making a lot of money on dynamite when we started. And uh, I did it for a few months before TNT saw a big value in it and then put over $175 million over a four year period into it. And I think we need to continue doing what we're doing. And I'm frankly doing a kick ass job of, which is delivering great ratings for their investment and uh, pushing to where our rights fees grow. Uh, Rampage, we've just launched, that's more revenue to us. I think I can grow that brand the same way Dynamite grew and and really build Dynamite and Rampage up. And our pay-per-view franchises have grown every year, year over year. Double or nothing 2020 was over 2019. 2021 was over 2020. Uh, Revolution was up from the year before. All Out, I can very confidently tell all of you, will be up for the third straight year. And Full Gear was up from the year prior, and I very confidently, a few months out, I'm pretty sure Full Gear is going to do a lot even better than last year. So uh, I'm going to continue to invest in the business, and then we'll see great returns. And, you know, that's for the fans. Like, I've been in the seat all of you are in, writing about wrestling, and I've been in the seat the fans are in, uh, watching wrestling and loving it and having it be a huge part of your life. And we need to make wrestling a big part of people's lives again where people get up in the morning, go to work, go to school, go, you know, it's summer, you know, go out and mess around in the summer, do what you're going to do and come home at night knowing you want to watch wrestling on Wednesday night, Friday night, or the pay-per-view on the weekend. And I think that's the best way we can maintain the momentum. This is a lifestyle business for me. This has now become a big part of my lifestyle. Uh, and, and I still have the other things in my life. I still have the NFL in my life. I was with Jerry Jones. Uh, it's, you know, I had a really nice talk with Jerry Jones about AEW, which is funny because he's promoting another wrestling show next year. But uh, I was visiting Jerry uh, in Dallas this past weekend and uh, when, when the Jaguars played the Cowboys. And, uh, you know, like I said, I put a lot of time, I put years of my life into uh, running an English football team at Fulham. And now this is a huge part of my lifestyle. And it's it's also... For the fans, I want it to be a big part of their lifestyle because I've been uh, on the other side of it and I know what it's like to go to work, to go to school, looking forward to watching wrestling all day. And I know that we've made that happen for people and I've had people come up to me and tell me how this helped them through the pandemic, that we kept doing the shows. And it makes me very happy to hear that, uh, you know. So, Sean, I think our best chance to maintain uh momentum is just keep pushing forward doing great shows and and building what we have thanks sean <clears throat> so next up we've got garrett martin from paste magazine and garrett will be followed by joe lanza voices of wrestling garrett um hey tony thanks for talking uh quick question for you uh, last week it came together that, or it came out that Universal would be the home of the dark tapings going forward. How did that deal come together, and uh, what makes Universal a, a good place for for you guys to to tape there? Uh, well, it's a great question. Thanks, Gary. Uh, so I, first of all, had worked with our live events director Rafael Morphy, uh, who'd had really good experiences there in the past. Uh, he had worked with Impact, and I'd like to now take this opportunity. I was glad you asked this because I want to position this. It's funny that I've seen people say, oh, they're going to that building and the perception of that building. And I think people need to look at the history of that building and also look at where Dark stands in terms of our TV platforms. Uh, it's not like I'm doing dynamite there. It's not like I'm doing rampage there. It's very different. And if we did look, it's a great venue. Okay. But it's not the plan anytime soon. Uh, for, you know, we're running very large arenas and have done great attendance for dynamite and rampage. It's a very different thing. So dynamite and rampage, those are the a shows and elevation and dark are great shows. You'll see some huge, huge stars on those shows. Uh, in fact, you know, you see, uh, Darby Allen, John Moxley, Eddie Kingston, huge stars compete on those shows on a regular basis. Orange Cassidy, Thunder Rosa, uh, and Nyla Rose, a lot of our top wrestlers compete on Elevation and Dark on a regular basis, but they also do so in, in terms of working with young wrestlers, developmental talent. We found a lot of people who are important wrestlers in AEW now through them working on Dark and Elevation. Red Velvet, the acclaimed the Varsity Blondes, Powerhouse Will Hobbs, all of these people are people that were losing matches on Dark and then 
I, you know, saw something in them. We saw something in them and I ended up signing these people to contracts and have, uh, looked for to push and utilize all those people because they all have great skills, but all of them came in and, and even those tag teams were working separately and I liked them and I put the, put them together. And so I think it gives opportunities to young talent. And to me, I position it like the show that was taped there before impact, which was WCW worldwide. And I, I like impact, you know, I, they've been very good to me, but I think it's a difference between how we're utilizing it and how they utilize it, even though they had it, they've had an amazing run there. But to me, it's more like what WCW used it as in terms of worldwide being a show where they developed a lot of young talent. It's ironic, you know, Chris Jericho, Chavo Guerrero, Dean Malenko, these are guys that work for me now in AEW. Those are some of the stars of worldwide. And those guys in Universal Studios had some classic matches uh, with uh, some veterans, you know, uh, best, rest in peace to one of my all-time heroes, one of the all-time greatest wrestlers who ever lived, beautiful Bobby Eaton. Uh, I've watched beautiful Bobby Eaton have great matches there, with, including with Chris Jericho, uh, which we were just talking about recently at Universal Studios. So there's, there's, it's a great place for the veterans. It's a great place for the young wrestlers. We don't have to necessarily be doing CM Punk versus Darby Allen there. We don't have to be doing Kenny Omega versus Christian Cage or Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander. But uh, we're going to do a lot of fun stuff there. And I think the fans that come will see some, some top stars and great wrestling. Uh, and I, I want to bring back the spirit of those worldwide tapings, which, were, uh, which hold a very fond place in my heart. Thanks, Garrett. Joe Lanza from Voices of Wrestling is up next, and Joe will be followed by Jim Barcelone from the Miami Herald. Joe, you're up. Hey, Tony. How you doing? I'm really well, Joe. How are you? Good. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of trios matches on TV lately. Do you have any updates or anything you could tell us about the potential much-rumored trios titles? Well, I mean, we see, you know, matches sometimes uh, that that – don't always uh, have title implications, but absolutely, I think it would be great to add trios titles. Uh, you know, right now, it's a lot of stuff. I'm getting in three hours, and I, I take a lot of pride trying to cover a lot in a two-hour dynamite, and then Rampage is very different. It's a more focused one-hour show, and uh, they're very different formats, and still get great wrestling in both shows, but I also cover a lot of stories in a dynamite in a very different way than I would in a Rampage, so it's, it's a lot right now. And, uh, you know, as, as we grow as a company, I do think there's definitely a place for that. And there's, there's a place for championships to, to expand. I think right now we have great titles and I, I have thoughts about other championships, including a trios championship among others. And as we expand, so it's a, it's a great question. Um, and we've had a lot of great trios matches. Absolutely. To be honest, if you think about it though, man, I bet I used to do more trios matches than I have been lately. I, if you, I, I haven't done like a study of the numbers exactly, like, you know, bean counting it number for number, but my gut says I used to do more trios matches in Daly's Place than I do now, and I could be wrong, but it feels that way. Um, so uh, I'm still very into doing trios matches. We've seen a lot of trios matches on Dynamite over the years. It doesn't feel like I've been leaning on them as much as I maybe used to, but um, there's reasons for that, but... Uh, we've been showcasing a lot of stories and a lot of story matches, and, and I really think we're in a great place to show. But like I said, there's, there's a time and a place for everything, and, and we have a lot of great trios, undoubtedly, and I think a trios championship would really kick ass. So uh, it, it does make a lot of sense, and it is something I've spent a lot of time thinking about, absolutely. Thanks, Joe. Um, okay, up next, we've got Jim Barcelon from the Miami Herald. Jim will be followed by Kenny McIntosh of Inside the Ropes. Jim, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tony, for doing this today. So interesting to me that in October, especially, Florida is such a big part of AEW. So much going on in Florida, whether you have the two Miami shows and you also have the Orlando show. And, and also you mentioned about Universal Studios Orlando doing the dark and dark elevation and all. So my question has to do with the Jericho Cruise is also going out of Miami in October. And I'm curious if there's going to be any rampage or dynamite from the Jericho Cruise. And also with that said, 
Will there be any AW Dark and Dark Elevation matches, one or two, at some of the Dynamite and Rampage shows? Or is it strictly going to be well, universal totally? No, no. Uh, well, we've been doing Dark and Elevation in the arenas. And what I've been doing to get kind of a rhythm in a week is if, if um, Dynamite is live, you know, Dynamite's always live. I'm sorry. So Dynamite's pretty much always live. So the, then I, I mean, so we've been doing Elevation before Dynamite. And then now that we've also gotten to doing Rampage, when Rampage is live, I've been doing Dark. So this week, well, we did Elevation last night with Dynamite, and tomorrow night we'll do Dark with Rampage. Uh, we're, we will hit a point where I can only t can't tape all the stuff together. So for the taping schedule, I'll continue doing Elevation before we go live with Dynamite as the pre-show matches, which is great. It really is great, and we warm the crowd up, and they get to see some of their favorites. And uh, Dark, specifically, will move to be, most weeks, the studio format. There's still going to be weeks you'll get Dark in a big arena, but a lot of the shows, and I'll, I'll do tapings, and uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we'll get a chance to really focus on a lot of the talent. And I try to do my best at it, um, but, you know, you're running around at Dynamite sometimes, and... You can't be in the chair for every moment on dark because, you know, I have to produce pre-tape promos, uh, backstage segments. Um, I might need to go to the truck. So, like, you know, it's good for, for myself and all the coaches uh, to be able to focus and work with the talent. And really, I, for me to be able to put in and really focus on their stories as the main focus of that taping rather than being something we're doing before or after our live two hour dynamite that's our bread and butter if that makes sense and we are doing a lot of stuff in florida so it's a multi-pronged question you slipped in there jim uh but uh it it's a great question um with the jericho cruise i that we're going to be doing on friday night um rampage live and then saturday night we're also just doing dynamite live and originally chris had the cruise that weekend and that's chris's personal project and i always wanted to help him with it and support it and it's not an official AEW event but chris is a huge part of AEW, and uh so that is leaving that weekend and we had a time shifting situation uh you know thankfully the the playoffs are long over and and what happened in july when we got back on wednesday night consistently we've done the best numbers in the history of the show since the show got back in its time slot not going to be a long-term thing or anything there's just two weeks in october where tnt sports uh had conflicts so we're doing the show live on saturday night which is fun uh and it does conflict with chris's cruise so i have got rampage on friday night and i have dynamite on saturday and we're out saturday and i'm some of the people uh for the cruise are not going to probably be at the dynamite necessarily uh but the flip side is I've also talked to Chris and if the stories if or if we have injuries or whatever, if I have to take people, I'm not planning to, I really am going to do my best to make sure the people Chris advertises are there. But God forbid, if we had to get people for dynamite, I, I would do it. But I also have every intent to help Chris and I, you know, have a pretty good reputation for loaning people out and being pretty honest and fair. Um, and I think, like I've said, I think that's a spirit that, has existed in the wrestling business and maybe we got away from, but there used to be a lot of camaraderie in this business a long time ago. Um, and, uh, look, it was, you, it only goes so far, but, but, but to an extent, there's been a lot of camaraderie. Uh, so, um, that's kind of where I'm at with it. And in the case of Chris, like there is a lot of camaraderie and, uh, I just, you know, I think it's going to be a cool event. I plan to, I think there may be some dark and elevation on there, but no, Dynamite and Rampage will all be doing live uh, on those shows in Miami. And then, uh, like you said, in Orlando, it's a lot of exciting stuff in Florida. Florida has been very good to AEW, uh, you know, supporting us through the pandemic. Uh, and I want to be good to Florida. You know, I'm back home where I grew up in Illinois this week, but I also lived in Florida and that's home to me too. So I like doing a lot of shows there. Thanks, Jim. Kenny McIntosh from Inside the Ropes is next, and then I'm going to take a couple uh, write-in questions after that. So, Kenny, you're up. Hey, 
Kenny, you need to unmute yourself. Kenny, there, buddy. Kenny, you need to click the uh, icon on the uh, dashboard to unmute yourself. All right, Jim, we can't get them undone. Okay, well, let me go to uh, at least one write-in question right now, Tony. Um, this was going to come from Paul White Whiterly. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Oh, I Paul. thought it was coming from Paul White. <laughs> no. He, I think he's in the queue, though. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so Paul White from, the, from Paisley Radio uh, has this question for you, Tony. With the huge success so far for AW, are you as a company ahead of the goals and targets you set when you started? Very much so. Very much so. Um, I was hoping to get a big contract extension to make Dynamite a uh, very sustainable, long-term uh, show that was going to have a lot of security and bring in a lot of revenue. And we did that faster than I think anyone could have anticipated getting an extension less than four months after we were on the air. And, uh, you know, the, the way things have followed, the difficult circumstances we've gone through, uh, we've come out of it for the better. And now the company's at all time high for ratings. We're about to do our biggest pay-per-view uh, I expect us to have great success, but absolutely some things have fallen into place faster than I ever would have expected. Uh, and it's, I think it's to the benefit of certainly all of us. And I think of the wrestling fans. Um, and I hope, you know, you folks in the media have seen an uptick too. It seems like, uh, there is more interest in wrestling and, and I hope it's working out for all of you because we don't, you know, it's great for the fans and it's, it's really great for us as a company, but I know it can be some benefit to all of you too. If, more people are interested in wrestling. And I think it's a win, win, win for all of us. Thanks, Tony. <clears throat> um, we're going to do another write in question right now. Um, and then on deck will be Niger Chambers from Big Gold Belt Media. So right now, Tony, we've got a question from Max Everett of Vendetta Sports Media. Are there plans for AEW to bring uh, its weekly shows out west in 22? And similarly, are there plans for AEW to explore international venues such as the United Kingdom, Japan, or Mexico in the future for weekly TV? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I am uh, planning to expand uh, into doing some international work next year. Uh, I think it would make a lot of sense, as I mentioned this past weekend. Uh, I don't want to put an exact timetable on it, but I do think it would make a lot of sense for AEW to come to Craven Cottage and for Craven Cottage to be a home to AEW wrestling in the UK. I think I am very confident we will be coming out West next year. I would like for Double or Nothing to return to where it all began for AEW to Las Vegas. And I think we are going to do that, uh, hopefully. Uh, and And obviously... We all know and from 2020 and 2021 plans can change and things are out of our control, but that is the goal and come out to Vegas and then hopefully do some other shows out West. I think it would be great. Thanks, Tony. Okay, coming up next is Niger Chambers from Big Gold Belt Media. Following Niger will be Adi Kafir from Ego TV in Israel. Niger. Hold on, Tony. Can you hear me? Hello? Hi, Hi. Niger. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, Tony, I mean, yes, like you said, this is your biggest car. You're back on the road. All things are trending good for AEW. And then you have a lot of major new additions to your roster and hopefully some more surprises this weekend. But... How close would you say to AEW is close to having a full roster? I don't think there's any such thing as a full roster, Niger. I think like uh, my experiences in football, both in the NFL and in England and with AEW, you're constantly looking to evolve the roster. It's got to be constantly changing. And one of the benefits we have with AEW as opposed to 
uh, the NFL or English football is I'm not really capped by a roster size or a salary cap. So it, it, it's largely my prerogative in terms of how to expand the roster, how many people to sign, uh, and how much we can grow. And uh, so we are under different limitations in other sports. But the, I think the idea is still the same, that you want to grow, evolve, and keep building and always looking for young talent or people that are expired contracts or people that want to make a comeback. And that's something that as wrestling fans, I think it makes it really special that you can always keep a roster fresh. For example, you know, I didn't go into this year thinking that uh, I was going to take 2.0 who I had seen a number of times. I really, you know, as independent guys and I'd seen them on NXT and I thought they were very good. I had no idea they were going to get released. They've been super, super valuable to us. And I really like Daniel Garcia. Uh, he was a, a guy on AEW Dark who was working without a contract or anything and, and doing a very good job. Uh, and I thought he had a lot of potential. And when I saw 2.0 available, I thought there was really something there and it fit the need of what we had at the time for, for the spot we had. Uh, and, you know, new, new fresh faces can help. And it, every signing doesn't have to be CM Punk or John Moxley, the biggest, you know, big, uh, names like that. Like you can also uh, sign talent that can really come in and enhance uh, the quality of the show and stack up and help your roster. So I, I think there's a lot of different philosophies about roster building I have. Uh, and it, you know, you're, you're really looking to build from the top and the bottom. And, and that's how you grow, uh, frankly, all the way through. And so there's all different spots in a wrestling company and there's all kinds of different people that can fill the spots. And as we expand our programming and, and grow, you know, we've expanded the roster a lot. I don't know. So I don't know if there ever is really such a thing as a full roster. It's a great question, though. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Niger. Adi Kafir from Eagle TV from Israel uh, is up next. Adi, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I apologize if I haven't. Michael Johnson from Pro Wrestling Insider will follow. Adi? Uh, hello, Tony. Hello, sir. Uh, it's really nice to meet you. Um, I have two short questions. Uh, the first one is... The first one is... Uh, we're seeing the Forbidden Door taking a, a big amount of time uh, in professional wrestling over the past couple of months. Uh, and I was hoping if you could spread a little light about the relationship between uh, yourself and the other promoters from the other uh, promotions. And uh, the second question is, uh, you were talking about uh, international touring and uh, maybe, and I was wondering if Israel is one of the destinations of AW in the future. Uh, these are great questions. Um, so, with the so okay, uh, I am not sure when uh, we would tour there, but absolutely, it's an attractive destination for wrestling, and I know uh, it would be a great place to tour. Would be Israel. I'm not sure when uh, we would make it out there, but uh, travel has obviously been more difficult these past couple of years. Uh, it's definitely a great home for wrestling, and uh, I have, I was always amazed. I, I didn't know until uh, really studying wrestling history that world-class championship wrestling had really caught on in Israel and caught fire there. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, so I know uh, wrestling can get really hot there. Uh, so it's definitely something to consider. And then uh, what was your, so what exactly, I couldn't quite, what was your question about the Forbidden Door and working with the other promoters? Uh, can you spread a little light about the relationship with the other promote, promoters from uh, you know, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, NWA, uh, AAA? They're all different relationships. It's like, you know, different people. You know, you can't put all your relationships, you can't put a label on all of them and say they're all the same. I have different relationships with different people. Um, I think those are all good relationships I have, but they're all unique. You know, I have a relationship with Billy at the NWA and uh, with Conan and Dorian with AAA and with uh, Scott and, the, and Ed and those impact folks and with New Japan Pro Wrestling. 
uh, you know, dealing with ghetto and the American office, uh, Rocky Romero, who I really, really, really like a lot. And so I think that it's, they're all different relationships, but I like working with the different promoters and, and the different companies. It, I think it's good for the fans and we've been able to put on some matches and have some title defended that people didn't think they were going to get to see. And I think it's been great exposure, frankly, for those companies. And I've also done a lot of favors in the last couple of years and someday maybe they'll pay off. They might not, but uh, you never know, but um, it's good karma for AEW. Thank you very much, Adi. Um, and Tony, Michael Johnson from Pro Wrestling Insider is next. I will follow Michael with a write-in question. Michael. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yep, hey. Uh, hey, Tony. Um, I wanted to ask you about the CM Punk relationship. A lot of people have asked about what it's like getting him to come to the company. I'm curious, after two years of working and heading AEW and, for, and building relationships with the elite and Cody and everybody else, what has it been like collaborating with Punk on a creative level to figure out what's the right way to have him enter the, the, the super highway that is this company, the right storyline, the right match, the right opponents? Because he's always been someone who said, okay, but what are we going to do next? So I'm sure those conversations are happening, but what has it been like collaborating with him and figuring out what's the best way to get the most out of CM Punk for AEW beyond just this initial honeymoon time? We have, I mean, we've, we're having a great time. I, I had a great time with him last night in the trailer, putting stuff together. Um, I have had a great time with him this whole run, you know, going out to dinner and trying to figure out ideas, uh, kick, you know, uh, coming up with the first dance, this match with Darby Allen. Uh, he's great. He has a great mind and he's, he's a fun, cool guy. And I think he's, he's got really interesting ideas and I collaborate with a lot of different people about stuff, you know, whether it's, uh, the Umbox or, or Kenny or Cody or Chris Jericho and all of their individual stuff, you know, whether uh, it's with Matt and Nick or with Kenny and him stealing my damn keys when we're talking or, uh, you know, Code or, or with Jericho and, and all of his stuff uh, with Mox um, and, uh, you know, n numerous people, Orange Cassidy, Dar Darby himself, uh, Britt Baker, uh, and a lot of other people uh, that, that I get with uh, on a regular basis. I mean, I'm, you know, pretty much anything on TV, I'm going to come in and, and talk to the people and, um, you know, have put a lot of thought into it before it goes on TV. So, um, yeah, I, you know, it's in some ways it's amazing because it's him, but it's like uh, he's, he's, he's amazing. And I, I compare it to another all-time legendary wrestler, which is Sting, which is, uh, I really enjoy sitting with Sting. And I think now Sting, originally he came in pretty tentative. And I think I took the heat for some of it because like people thought, well, you know, the way I was using Sting, but I think it was about pacing and Sting now is starting to get more physically involved. And I think honestly, like Sting in a, as the way his character has evolved in AEW is really cool. And it wouldn't have made sense to him or for us for him to come in and do as much physical stuff as he did. We really had to ease into it and get comfortable. And he's very comfortable. He's in amazing shape and he's doing safe stuff and having the time of his life. And uh, I think now with Punk, um, it's been uh, really, really cool collaborating with him. And honestly, he's got a really great wrestling mind. And he's brought so much to the table already. He's had great ideas and he's, he's a really good person to collaborate with. I think, um, I've, before he got here, I've seen him. I, I think it's, I, I won't, I won't actually, I won't, it was too, it'd be too easy. Uh, but I will just say this. I think, uh, I don't really understand some of the things he was asked to do before he, before he left wrestling. I don't think some of the stuff he was asked to do before he left wrestling made sense. And I told him, if they're ever asked you to do something that doesn't make sense, it's not coming from a malicious place. Like if, you, if something doesn't make sense for you, tell me and let's talk about it. And that's generally how I am with everyone. Um, if somebody doesn't like something, I get, you know, I'm not trying to put stuff in that doesn't make sense. Not one person 
including Mr. Punk, including uh, everybody on the roster, has creative control. Uh, it's not like WCW, and I think that is one of the issues with WCW is when you have a person who has creative control in their contract who can hold up the show. I don't know how you can get through TV doing that. I can't imagine if I had to deal with that. But what I do have is a lot of people I want to sit down and talk to and hear what they have to say. Just because nobody has a contractual right to tell me you can't make me do that, you can't put me in that match or whatever, doesn't mean that I want to put people in bad situations or do things that don't make sense to them or for their career or for the fans. So I, I like him a lot. He's got a really good mind. He's been great to me. And it's been really good for the fans so far. The excitement is off the charts and, and we're just getting started and I'm really looking forward to working with him. And I think, uh, you know, it's really exciting. And, um, you know, when John, when Moxley came in, um, I think people had tried to do a number on his, a number on him as a person a little bit. And he's one of my favorite people in the world. He's one of the easiest people to collaborate with. He's a genius. He's got a great mind. He's writing a book right now that when people read it, I think it's the best wrestling book in a really long time because he wrote it by hand. You'll be, you'll definitely be able to tell he wrote it by hand and, uh, it's him. It's like him doing a promo. And, uh, I just think, uh, he's been amazing to collaborate with and people had said through the grapevine, you hear rumors that a guy is difficult or whatever. Well, it couldn't be more the opposite of the case. He's strong willed. He has ideas but he also brings so much to the table and he's a really good person and great to work with. And that's true of both guys. So I, I really like, uh, of course, I, like I said, I've really enjoyed working these past couple of years with John and now, uh, you know, building a relationship over a year talking and now really being together every week. It's, I really like CM Punk. Thanks, Tony. I've got a write-in question here um, from Eleanor Line of Eleanor Wrestling on YouTube. I'm going to ask it and then ask Joe Rivera from the Sporting News to be ready to go uh, once Tony gives his uh, answer here. So <clears throat> Eleanor wants to know, with, with, with the incredible, incredible women's division that AEW has and the addition of the Casino Battle Royale this Sunday, how does AEW plan to continue to elevate and improve women's wrestling? It's a great question. Uh, well, I'm doing a lot of things. I'm trying to, first of all, help other companies with women wrestling in addition to my own. And uh, so I, I think people really uh, have seen a, a lot of our women's wrestlers uh, this past weekend. I, you know, I loaned uh, uh, some of them out to the NWA and uh, I, thought that was a cool event they put together and I was happy to, to help out with it by, by sending our AEW talent and paying them. Uh, and I have moved the Casino Battle Royale onto this card because it is a really valuable match. And in my opinion, in the two years from when we did the first Women's Casino Battle Royale, which I was an agent on, and I'll be the agent on this one too, uh, it was great working with the talent. It's a much better roster just like the first casino battle royale men's we did there was a lot of independent wrestlers and people god bless them they're great same with the women's casino battle royale there's some great people in there but in my opinion the roster is much better so just like a double or nothing it was a much more coherent better roster and i think a much better match than the first one i expect a more coherent roster and a better match and uh the first women's casino battle royale was really good i liked it i, I thought everyone did a great job and i commended everyone coming back but I think we, we can top it and have a better match. The roster is just much more stacked. There's a lot of star power in it. And a lot of the biggest stars in the match weren't here a couple of years ago. So it's been really, it's, it's, it has come a long way. A lot of that is through the pandemic. And again, going back to dark, I tried to expand the roster and really build a developmental system through AEW dark and the pandemic afforded the ability to do so because doing the empty tapings, I was able to just tape for hours and hours on end, bring people in, and uh get uh you know a good look at uh numerous numerous wrestlers uh that we probably wouldn't have had a chance to really spend that kind of time with to, to basically be in the empty arena and be able to devote an entire day to taping dark and you know now not being in daily's place it's kind of a different setup but i think we grew so much in that time and so many people came along uh in that era 
now all of a sudden we're back on the road and we have all these people that, you know, the fans in the arenas just can't get enough of. And now, uh, you know, Red Velvet and Ty Conti and Thunder Rosa and people that have really come in in the, in the past year plus have built great reputations. And it was really fun. Um, it was really fun and gratifying to see the reaction Anna Jay got because I had a feeling, you know, that that was something uh, I really, really had a good feeling was going to get a big pop. And it did. And I was really excited when it did. And uh, I just think continuing to build the roster is important because the better the star power is in any wrestling company and any wrestling division, the more attention it's going to get and the more focus it's going to get. And they're getting better. And that's why I moved them onto the pay-per-view because that match is going to be very good. And there's a lot of stars in that match. And then look at the match I put on the buy-in. It's no disrespect being on the buy-in. And I, I, this is a great chance for me to clear that up. Because if you look at people that wrestled in that spot, I mean, I, you know, our first pay-per-view, we had Hangman, MJF, and many others in that match on the buy-in. I, I put big stars there repeatedly. And look at the match, uh, you know, since, since we were unable uh, to deliver on Andrade El Idolo versus Pac, look at the match I put on the buy-in to replace the women's casino battle Royale, a match that involves Matt Hardy, a legend in the wrestling business, a veteran of over 25 years in this business and jungle boy, one of our biggest young stars and orange Cassidy, another one of our biggest stars, Luchasaurus is a huge act here. Private party, one of our top teams, a lot of big wrestlers in AEW, Chuck Taylor, the best friends and important people uh, on in that match. And I think if, and Matt Hardy was excited to do it. And Jungle Boy was excited to do it. And Orange, Orange Cassidy doesn't get excited about anything, but he was about as excited as he gets. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great spot. And I think they, you know, for them to move on and do that match, they were very happy to, to take that spot on. So if anybody's going to have like a negative perception or say like, which I see people say all the time, it's kind of crazy uh, because that match is really important. It drives a lot of viewership. And it has a ton of eyeballs on it. It's, it's, it's an advertisement for the pay-per-view and it's a big statement of confidence in the people that are in it because you're really relying on them to do something good. That's going to sell this pay-per-view. Um, but it's gotten a perception that the pre-show match, the buy-in match that it's not important. And I mean, when I, you know, I was a kid and I saw Stone Cold Steve Austin in a pre-show match. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, I don't, I don't really, uh, I, I don't know how it got to be like that. And I'm not sure why people think that, but I, you know, anyway, I, I do think the casino battle Royale will be excellent. I think another thing that's really enhanced uh, the quality of the division, in addition to the talent we brought in is people that have been here from the beginning, getting a lot better. Penelope Ford turned in a tremendous performance last night on dynamite. She had a tremendous performance uh, against Thunder Rosa. She's wrestling her ass off. And then, uh, Nyla Rose has, has been a consistent force from day one, still, still great. Uh, but you know, we've seen a huge improvement to me in uh, Penelope. And then on top, you've got Dr. Britt Baker, who is one of the most improved wrestlers in the world over the past couple of years, maybe the most improved wrestler. She was voted by the fans, the most improved wrestler in the world. And he's a great world champion and a headline star in any company in any era. So, um, you know, I, I do think um, with her uh, star power, it's also helped. And I've tried to build a, a more diverse division and bring a, bring a lot of uh, new stars in. And I just think all of those things combined. And, and Kenny Omega's got a great eye for talent. He's scouted a, a lot of great people. And I really, you know, um, despite on screen clashing with him a lot, I spend a ton of time with him and really. Uh, enjoy that and i think he has a great eye for talent and he, he scouted some great people and i really value also that his eye for great joshi talent and i think rio and shida have been great champions for us emi sakura and yuka sakazaki have come in and done really well for us and we'll see sakura again back in the women's casino battle royale uh, along with shida and I was going to save it for Rampage, but I might as well just do it now. You know, Riho is also going to be in the Women's Casino Battle Royale. And 
Uh, I, I think I have something pretty fun planned uh, for maybe a surprise too. So it's going to be a good time. Uh, and I just really think it really by, by building stars, that's the, the way we can keep advancing it because wrestling is a star driven business and Britt, Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa was such a success as a main event because put a lot of time into it and they're both stars and it felt like a program between two stars. And when they had their match at beach break and the story continued on through the St. Patrick's day slam and the lights out match you know, we really built the anticipation. That was not a main event that you just threw in because you needed a main event or you wanted to put something in the main event. And there's times where, you know, you're struggling with a card. There's, there could be injuries, travel issues. And, you know, there's weeks where I've had to say to myself, I've had to move something in there uh, and, and kind of give it, a, give it a shove. And this was something that belonged in the main event. And, you know, it was a credit to their work and, to the star power, I think the division is building. And there are many other people that are, that are coming in and doing exciting things. I think Jade has a world of potential and is doing great. So, uh, you know, really um, just going to keep working on it. And I'm looking forward to Britt versus Statlander and looking forward to the Women's Casino Battle Royale on the paper. Thanks for the question, <clears throat> Eleanor. So we've got a hard stop in about two or three minutes. That uh, renders uh, Joe Rivera as our, our last uh, question of the day. Joe, if you're good to go, you're up. Yeah, hi, Tony. I hope you're doing well. Um, my question is about the TNT Championship. Now, mid-card championships can be very tricky to book, and it can take That's uh, not a, a long time. I know. Okay. I admit it's copy right there. It's not a mid-card okay. championship. The only people that have held the belt are Cody, Brody Lee, rest in peace, Darby Allen and Miro. So I don't consider it, I'm not booking it like a mid-card championship. I'm looking at it as like a top title that stars hold. So I like I will take exception right off the bat. But okay. uh, That's totally uh, fair. But how impressive is it uh, to you to see how each champion has elevated the title and how important is having that title with so much respect and so much prestige early on? Well, you got me back with the second half of your question. Okay, I'm back with you. So uh, that is the key to the championship is that none of the champions have been a stretch. In thermodyna thermodynamics, heat is passed from a warmer body to a cooler body. If you have a hot belt and you take a cold wrestler and you say, I can heat this guy up by putting the belt on him, the problem with that is that you cool off the belt. So the key to this belt, in my opinion, has been that from the beginning, it's been hot matches, hot issues. It's been pushed on television. And the champion has always been a protected star. And it would not have been right for Darby to honestly win the first tournament. And Darby was a huge part of the tournament. He went to the semifinals and lost to Cody before the Cody Lance Archer match at the pay-per-view because it was part of the build for Darby finally winning the title. Uh, Cody and Darby had a classic match at full gear, which is a great pay-per-view. and even though we were only at 25% capacity, I thought it was one of the best wrestling shows anyone did all year, period. Uh, and really, for me, uh, I just think uh, it, would not, it wouldn't have made sense where he was at that point. He had to get red hot to, for it to be the right time for him. And same uh, for Brody and Miro. Those are huge, huge stars. And the, neither of them came in and won the TNT title their first week. They really built up and built steam and uh, solidified their place in the fans' eyes. So I think the belt has been very protected, and that's why it is not a mid-card championship. And I never intend for the TNT title to ever become a mid-card championship. It's really uh, near and dear to my heart. And so uh, I think protecting the title is really the key thing. And when you look at other quote-unquote mid-card championships, that's how they became mid-card championships. You know, there's other belts in wrestling, and I think we all know the one I'm talking about, that used to be really protected, that used to mean something really important, and it's been batted around, it's been retired, it's been brought back. Well, what does it even mean anymore? And I never will let this be that. Thanks, Tony, and thanks for the question, Joe. 
And unfortunately, we're out of our time uh, for this afternoon. Um, so per our custom, we'll be distributing an audio recording shortly, and we look forward to seeing many of you in person at All Out. Um, so wherever you may be over the ho uh, Labor Day holiday, on behalf of the entire All Elite Wrestling family, and Tony Khan, thank you for your time today, Tony. We thank you for your interest and support, and hope all of you have a safe and fun three-day All Out weekend. Thank you. Thanks.